So thank you so much for inviting me over here because it's a joy to be part of our witness. And these are the events which celebrate our ethnicities, the different peoples that are come. So it's a joy to be part of that, but a bigger joy to be sitting across Muslims for the work that I'm here today for. Now just to share with you. In my true Babu spirit, first thing I did was as to what are the questions that you would like asked, which are of course, you know, edit and approve. And very strongly he put up a crisp list. I have a you know, suspicion that you had manicured it and sized it down to suit the limited intellect of a bureaucrat, understanding of a bureaucrat. But then, uh, you know, I am not here as an officer. I am here as in my own small way as a student of literature. So, with your permission, I will start the conversation. Now, so there, there is some that I knew about you and about your body of work. Who doesn't know the University of Mumbai? But over the past four or five nights, as I was trying to read a zig, as I was just mentioning to you, I have to admit that I too am in some kind of a trance. Because what I was reading and trying to know in those few hours is a lifetime. You as a committed son, as a secret after of beauty and truth, as a poet, painter, filmmaker, trying to render your beloved other into the public imagination. You as a lover of chivalry, cars, horses, politician, a seeker, a Sufi. You are in so many parts. So my first question would be, wherein lies your real essence, or put in another word, how, what holds the whole of you together? Uh, it's a privilege that you read my book. And, uh, a lot of people have read it and have given me inspiring responses. But I think uh, somewhere down the road we lose track of being human. And when we lose track of being human, finally it is human. And uh, being human is just uh, not about being human, but being human also appreciating human effort appreciating human courage, appreciating the beauty that human beings create. So, I mean, somewhere uh, the creativity of the human uh, being is a very important a dynamic uh, source of inspiration for me and this book. If I didn't have that, I think I got this from my father. Because he was uh, very emphatically and um, human. You know, very few people are just human because they're human. Right? But he was clinically human. And uh, he, as I described in the book, how, how committed he was caused to the human, uh, uh, of human nature. I mean, I think that became a source of inspiration. And that helped me to put everything I saw in the framework. So think being human is the core, and humanism coupled with aesthetics. See, the, the balance of humanism and aesthetics is very important. Because wherever you see any balance, it's a, it's a symptom of grave ugliness that can spoil the whole scenario. So the balance of humanism and aesthetics has been my driving force. I could see that, and that message is quite profound, and I kind of got trapped into that, and that's why I decided to not take any of the questions you gave me, but set out on my own journey of talking to you, because it's a reader's response to your life and your work. Now, Uzusati, there is much poetry in your book. It's prose, but it's poetry. But there is also a thing. So, uh, like you mentioned now, Avad and Avadan, your inheritance and your common laws. 
there is divide, which I have written, uh, to quote you. you. You mentioned at some point, I need to feel, I needed to feel assured that the other of my father's dreams was in fact unsafe and touched. My question is, what does it really feel like to carry within you the evening of the civilization? <laughs> I think there is no way to improve this in this journey and it's a huge <clears throat> undaunting task and to take his hour to me is to also take my grandchild's hour with me. So it's our this uh, kind of uh, overarching uh, sense of beauty, inspiration, which, I mean, we find in friendships, which we find uh, in pain, which we find in poetry, we find in relationships. And I think a lot of relationships here are made of that same uh, uh, chemistry. So, uh, to take that hour with me is a kind of uh, responsibility, which is not just Latna, it is spreading, also not just a village, it's taking me everywhere. Because what is our, our to me here is, uh, is Pezi, respecting other cultures. So respecting other cultures is really the lesson that I've learned from this particular legacy. And that is always the right. And that is what drives me from chapter to, to chapter, is the, is the respect for the, for the next thing that is coming to me, be it animal, be it capital, be it yes. whatever. So it's, I, I'm entering these spaces with deep uh, humility and profound respect. Now, I touch on most of the things. You are a Sufi to the core. There's so much of what you write, like beauty and love becoming one, knowledge and ish coupling, uh, harmony radiating joy outward. So you find it all. Much of what you write, like I said in the beginning, uh, especially towards the end, the last chapter, is the prose reads like pure poetry. Now, Somehow I get the feeling that many times you are actually talking to yourself on that day on the dance. There is kind of, it, it's almost like you are evolving uh, into a higher realization in our new life. So what I wanted to ask was, is Vikram a journey of self-discovery to you personally? I mean, how it can go from there at once. <laughs> you say it in a way it's a realization and an answer in itself. No? But uh, I think uh, this is what uh, I mean. I see being a Sufi should there should be no definition to that. It's just being a person who is a seeker of beauty and seeker of, uh, of joy and bliss is what is really a Sufi manual. I don't think it will need to be labeled as such. So the more we get out of labels, the better it is for all of us. Because then we can connect with just a seeker. So being a seeker itself is uh, enough for two people to come together. I'll touch on most of the things. You are a Sufi to the core. There's so much of what you write, like beauty and love becoming one, knowledge and ish coupling, uh, harmony radiating joy outward. So you find it all. Much of what you write, like I said in the beginning, uh, especially towards the end, the last chapter, is the prose reads like pure poetry. Now. Somehow I get the feeling that many times you are actually talking to yourself on that day on the dance. There is kind of, it, it's almost like you are evolving uh, into a higher realization. I think uh, by just love, 
chapter of dreams, I think chapter of dreams are very important for realization. As a thing, I call it in many of me to pay the other person. So I think just your shattering of your dreams are the biggest source of your point of return to yourself. All the things I've done, most of the things that have shattered and come back. You know what I mean? Now, on the pet theme of the book, I think not there are several themes, but places. Places really come alive as characters in the book. Like you mentioned a couple of them now, whether it is Calcutta or Delhi or Aligarh or Akashu or New York. But then, Kolkata uh, and Kekabar is what holds your heart. Just like maybe the sample for a poem. So now, sometimes writers create a fabled town, like by Sanchi. But then, as a student of literature, life feel is translating a real place for a reader, interpreting a lived culture for an insider or an equally for an outsider. I'm an outsider. So that is not easy. The entire ethos, the worldview, the cuisine, the craft, the, the socio-economic landscape, the politics, the ethics, the humor, everything, so much. So, how would you look back and um, feel about your success, or rate yourself as a mass mediator for art? Because most of what you've been doing, I think that was your relationship to me. See, I think, uh, please. <coughs> is a huge creation of mankind. You know? He's created a space literally on one hand being created by the Almighty and there he has gone and created spaces for his own uh, existence. Now that in itself is a humbling experience. <coughs> so wherever you go, you if you're driven by one single force, which is Ish, you see wonder in any image you see. So I think places have this uh, enormous beauty of unfolding in, in the light and shade of time. You know? And they create nostalgia, they contain laughter, they contain so many beautiful things that are beyond the realm of our, but there is an hour within. And that hour within is really making you enjoy uh, Kashmir, of, uh, of the Bombay, of the habit of your dreams, you know. They become part of that inner hour. So the inner hour is really... You co-opt all of those also as part of your hour. And I think hour in itself uh, is such a beautiful concept of no war, where no youth will take place, you know what I mean? So it's a realm of peace. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to go into the, into the nuances of the feelings which... Just to add to that, I'm saying exactly what you said now. As you describe places and you write in each of these places, you, one noteworthy point is that in each of your reminiscences about your place, you credit that place so that one has to unique value that you take to your life and your perspective. Like uh, that chapter on Aligarh. So we can see, as you say, that Aligarh gave you poetry and sensitivity and a mature comprehension, understanding of the world around. So it's almost like there are many cities living inside you. And the nice thing is that you have left your chart on all of them, but in turn you have forced each one of them to bear its soul to you. <laughs> Yeah, so as we read through, we also you, you were very incisive. So, uh, yeah, so on that point, just one little elaboration about one thing. How do places actually shape people? Tell us a bit about that. I think first uh, element that uh, a place brings to life is the other people. Right? And the people really are the brick and mortar or the walk in the bed of the place, you know. And you have to really understand people beyond what meets the eye, you know. There's a soul of a person. And there's something, I mean, 
being in films, I go a little more kind of mid-range approach, which is uh, the humor of the person, what his eyes say. I mean, so there's a lot of potential that I see in a person uh, as a person, and there's also in the mid-range as an actor. You know? and so people have really been my source of joy. And I think I, if I don't find people funny, then there's nothing wrong with me or anything. But I find everybody a little on the humorous side, because otherwise you can't take them. You should take them too seriously. Somehow I watched a lot of your graduation days in my regard, and after that you're still in politics. All of that is hugely humorous. Huh? Your, your wit, the reparty, the observation, all of it, I mean, it really is a, so somehow I feel that that, uh, what do you call it, that the robust humor is also a part of your other intentions, I think. Yeah, it's, I think it's a source of wonder. Next, uh, the thing I wanted to ask is, Zikr is not about places, but it is equally about people. The many and the each who kind of shape your life, or even fleetingly touch your heart. So I wanted to read a line which I was searching for that. Yeah, each somewhere you mentioned each day I met the, I meet people and see the unseen connections that exist. It's a short line, but so much of what you've written is about these working on these unseen connections. So was this book also a conscious attempt to thank? Relationships and people that define and anchor you. You're quite right. I mean, unless you are <clears throat> humble about your relationships, you don't receive anything. And once you start receiving, there's no end to receiving. No? And once you start receiving, there's no end to giving also. So this is what I think uh, uh, an artist journey is all about. He is giving back to people what he's getting from the people. You know? And that has to be in which, you know, in, these, in the spirit of case, you have to be both creative yourself and discover the creativity in the other person. So to discover the creativity in the other person is very important. That makes a whole way of looking at the world very different. Because you know? I'm just trying to make people who come in contact with me more creative. And the process become more creative myself. I have to make people creative, no matter he may just be a carpenter. But his encounter with me is precious. So I have to add. He has value. some value to you. Yeah, he has value, value and I'm adding value to him. So it's a it's an endless thing, you know. Yeah, and creativity is not also even for people who worked with you in uh, along with you and your father. All of them are etched in a very humble way. So there's a lot of humility in the way you describe people. And that is so very refreshing. I mean, that I mean, I got my father because he came up to a point he was almost a villager. And then beyond, the, after the say, gap of seven or ten years, he comes back from Scotland and completely westernized person with a modern uh, progressive communist outlook. Mm. For him to be a communist outlook person in this feudal world was, a, was something very really refreshing to me. So, and he loved the Talukdas and he also found them uh, very endearing and very, very amusing also. Uh, there was a lot of amusement. I mean, it was, it's a different community. I think humor is also built on compassion only. You're able to understand where the other person is coming from. And you are, without you are, judgment. You are, humor, you're not making fun of somebody. Yeah. You're celebrating that person. A lot of people make fun of people in humor. That's not that is a different genre. You celebrate persons through that humor. Yes, yes. And without judging and being part you're of that. Judging. You, in fact, you're being touch yourself. Yes. You're laying down your defenses and trying to describe uh, humor. Now, 
Beach may want to out of the one trick question with a disclaimer that it's not a political question. But then I think there is hardly any act of ours which is like a political. And there will be a person like you out in the public realm, your personal is indeed political. Uh, do politics as a way of engaging the community? Politics as a foothold into the future of the country. Do you see yourself there again by some chance? Abadan saw uh, that faith, that politics is revolution. Do you still share that faith? Do you still believe that? I think you're right. I, I'm deeply political, and whatever I'm doing has deep political manifestations. It may have it now, or it may have it 10 or 20 years later. Today I feel somebody like Vayantari Shah is a huge arsenal against divisive policy, politics. Mm -hmm. So politics is something which is going to be part of our lives. Mm -hmm. But it's very essential that we look at politics as a human uh, uh, experience, as something that brings people together. And that's what my father says, anything that divides man is dangerous. To be a boy. Yeah. Um, I was reading uh, this part on your graduation. There is, you mentioned geology. You know that? I am reading that line. Geology was my dream. Uh, the echo of the hammer and the chisel mixing with the chirping of birds and the sounds of the wind blowing through the mountains. You actually connected mining to romance. Now, as the mining secretary of the state, I have to ask this. Do you still have that fascination for the hammer of the chisel, that uh, geological wilderness, as he said? I think uh, all people who nurse a poet in themselves, they take these kind of things to another level. Yeah. But, but mining, you know, ask him. Uh, yeah, but then but, uh, you are mining, like the secrets uh, of the earth. It's more like the secrets no, of the earth. mining souls, you know, also. <laughs> digging love out of their souls. Yeah, yeah but that the geology as a subject, does it still attract you? Yeah, because you know, it's got enormous manifestation. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't know anything about it. I've forgotten But you studied it. I know the philosophy of geology. I know outer geology and I know the inner geology, but somehow if I was given a job as a geologist, I'd be a clock. No? <laughs> <laughs> the logo of the mining department of UP is Ratna Gartha Vasundra. So that's a very pregnant statement. <laughs> <laughs> that again, you become philosophical. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, one question from the very Harry Lepore Commissioner of Ratna. When you, uh, you, you actually bemoan how the, in the Ratna of today, institutions which are our cultural heritage are in the hands of bureaucrats who neither know nor care. And I couldn't agree more. Because the thing is, uh, I agree for this reason that no any one person should be given that kind of right to mess up with the common legacy. It's kind of frightening that the power to destroy, you know? that's frightening. Now, uh, a case in point is Amritala Library. So there is a, a part where you mentioned how, in fact you mentioned many times, how your father looked out through the window of your house in Kesselbar, looking at Amritala day after day, and that thing which stood there as the sole hope for the uh, survival of a civilized society. Now that library is not in good shape. So would you want to see that as a symbol, a kind of trope for what went wrong? See, there are three libraries, you know. One is the inner library, yes. the outer library, and the library itself, you know. In fact, yesterday I had a strange dream that this library was totally destroyed and somehow this, my father's picture was ripped off from the wall. And a strange thing that happened in the library, and I went there. So I am telling you a fact yesterday night. So, and I think that library is, for me, a great legacy of my father's sentiment. 
For him, everything was a tribute. His inside and outside was a tribute. All his books went there. There was a book binder. I mean, everything I've learned is from that library. I used to play in that library. I got into the passion of binding books because there was Dakhtari there. And I just couldn't, I got so watching him how he would bind the book. The binding of books is really uh, a very sensual, uh, yeah, to feel the pages. Yeah, I mean, you don't get from a or anything, you know, that book is the book. Yeah, book. In fact, this book I'm going to bind in leather myself. So the art of binding, the art of preserving, the art of the, the, the tactile quality of books, the fragrance of books, that is very important for the society. People have to become very sensitive to that. And the other thing is that the outer world of the library has to also bow down when they pass the library. They must not honk. Because if they start honking, can you imagine uh, hundred souls trying to focus on a page? So we need to address the library as a, as a bigger issue. The respect for the library, the purpose of the library. So, I mean, just to, um, not in defense of the bureaucracy, but just to assure you, uh, we are doing a bit of things on that, I'm saying, apart from the scope of the interview. Like, we are um, from digitization of all the records and cataloging of the entire library because it is so much of precious resources. And you've also sanctioned some funds for the uh, renovation, conservation rather, because you cannot do simple brick and mortar work there. It has to be conservation. So we have sanctioned that the work is going to start. A full-time librarian is being appointed. Lots of people are like interestingly. So the interview is going to start and we're going to get a full-time person. Some class four employees are also being hired. We are going to take some library science graduate children also. We can put some light into that children section and all that. And then we can start some community activities also in the future. See, this is an old world library. Yes. yes. And the whole world you know, cherishes the old world library. Yes. In, in fact, in India too, in almost every town, there will be one of those signature, the, the state central library or the district central library, that is a place people cherish. So that's, and when we both are doing it, I promise to engage more with you and your clients. So, and you <laughs> Yeah, I am. That's that will be nice. Now, one part uh, you say, we spend our lives enmeshed in a web of stories whether as tellers of tales or listeners. And in another story you say, stories and more stories make up the lessons of life. How many more stories do you have to share with us? I think uh, the whole world is full of stories. I mean, every day, every face has a story. And uh, even when I paint, I'm telling a story, because the story it's not just a story. It's got a lot of emotional, visual, cinematic uh, nuances of light and shade. So a story, and Lucknow is really a, a city of story. So there were people who couldn't speak about stories. So we need to bring that to whole ambience of hearing and telling stories. It's coming back, but it has to come back. See, stories are told, should be told without a purpose. They should be told to see you smile. They should be told to see you excited. They, have, they should be told to see you titillated. And then they should be told to see this very peaceful face oblivious to the world. Just like the ones your Abhadan used to share at the lunch table. Yeah. So many. Yeah. And storytelling is such a powerful presence in the industry. A lot of people are too intellectual to tell stories. They're too distracted to tell stories. Yes. Story stories is to bring yourself down to the level of patience of a child, or rather impatience of a child. And then you live and relive that again and again. Yeah. And it's handed over to you. And that's what we learned for the filmmaking. Mm. 
in film making is how to tell the story in ways that uh, uh, will stay in your bloodstream. See, the story has to remain in your bloodstream. And unless it's not blended with the light and shade of your, your beating of your heart, it is going to be ejected. Today, the ejection of creativity is much bigger than retention of creativity. You must have on that point of filmmaking, the story on celluloid. So, uh, it must have been asked a thousand times, and I, I don't know if it's a cruel question, but is Zuni ever uh, crossing over from your dreams to the screen? Because I ask that only because I can see that that was your intended magnum opus. It is something which still holds your heart, and maybe more than Umaraja. Actually, it was a dream too big for me. It was a dream too big for the country also. Because the country didn't deserve that dream. Wrong question. Yeah. And there's something wrong with both myself and the part that we in. Because I think it's, it was a... I don't know to go into the outer purpose and objective. That's good, that's there, there. But the, the... I mean, bottom line is that what I received from there is unlimited wealth. That film, in it being incomplete, has given me so much richness that I can't even describe. I think it, it does trickle down in the book, but it's enormous. What's up, Rafi? You have to speak a little more on that. No? <laughs> no. I know. Yeah, because you know, I mean, yeah. there's too much to talk. It's too, too painful also, and too close to me, but uh, all I can say that I realize that it was, I mean, this, that whole insurgency and this, and this stiffening of the, of the uh, right-wing stance there and all that and how people were becoming cold and, and how still there was a certain kind of softness under, uh, in the soil below and how one would wait for a new spring to come and all those subtleties are there. But I got a lot from there. I mean, I'm, I've been trying to describe it in the book. But I think... And you try for a long while to... I still want, to I'm still trying. Ah, so that makes my answer. Yeah, I will keep trying till my last day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this... A very blunt question, Mr. Is there hope? What I need to ask is, uh, for you it's specifically Kotwala, for some of us it's Awad, for all of us it's India, the idea of India. Now in the book, the things that you mentioned, a composite culture, the beauty of harmony, respect for the other, that Tainame, uh, Mohabbat, that Tainat Safar, that you led from Deva Sharif to Gola Gokharana, the compassionate India, so what is your message? Now I ask that specifically because as a Sufi, uh, you are the message. You have to be the message. And there is one or two very beautiful lines that I wrote down about the journey of a Sufi is what he undertakes for others. For the eyes of others, the ears of others, the mind of others, but all through the medium of one's own soul. So what I want to ask you, from your journey, shine out some inner light on our common path forward. What is your message to the youth of all of us also? I think uh, basically um, observation. We need to observe with humility things around you. So there's so much beauty in people that uh, the polarization is just skin people. If I just look at that person for about five minutes, that person will lay down his arms. Because deep within, everybody is... Uh, They're all one. Yes. They're all one. And they feel one. I've never felt the difference between 
any group of human beings. I mean, I can see, I mean, and today, the strange rhetoric that you hear is totally contradictory to, to the reality of the country, you know? I mean, I mean, the amount of service that, I mean, I don't even want to use the word Muslims and Muslims, you know? but the kind of uh, contribution that, uh, let's say, that we make to the world of music in the Hindu courts by the Muslim Ustad is, uh, is a, uh, speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the contribution and this whole uh, passion for reaching out, touching people, keeping aside all kinds of barriers, using Krishna way required, so all these things are happening, you know, and you can't put it away, you can't uh, take it away, because it's coming from inside. And it's for people like us to keep driving that, um, that, that, uh, that, that force forward. You know? Like Abhajan's humanism, he yeah. had a humanist... Uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I think our answer to Abhajan would be that, yes, India is not one part it is, it is many many ethnicities and many beliefs living together. So, you know, like one can say that a cauldron of culture is brewing its own magic. And the magic of India is because we all are here. Um, yeah, so that is a very beautiful part of your um, philosophy, your book. One, one or two more I'll ask and won't talk you beyond that. Um, like Palmer's that uh, Museum of Innocence, you also talk about making a museum to our uh, clothes and tapestry and all because uh, more clothes as a metaphor for art like you had a childhood when you were surrounded by all the drapes and silks of your mother and that i think grew into the uh, brand of fashion that Miraji and you have built up so that is art in a very human in a very intimate form so how do you see art how does it shape this and what is the meaning for art? Because you are an artist and I have to ask you that. See, art, and we acquire it with a deep sensitivity, with responses to uh, a variety of things that, that, that touch us. Mm. Could be area of words, concepts, sounds, moving images. So art is really uh, kind of a um, uh, kind of a full circumference around you of a free of feelings that are being awakened all the time to make you a, a complete artist. And all art is interconnected. If you say I'm a poet without a visual sense, you will not go very far. If you say I'm a visual sense, Visual artist, without the poetic sense, you won't go very far. So I think somewhere the whole uh, world of sound and light and movement and the act of touching, feeling, and sharing, these are all, I think, uh, uh, dimensions of art we have to nurse and nourish. And then what really makes you a, a complete a more complete artist and makes you a more intimate artist for yourself. You know? And this is where you know craft becomes very important. Because there was a time when uh, I only saw craft. I felt what miracles people can do with their fingers. You know? and, and this miracle of the human hand has not stopped uh, making me wonder. You know? The miracle of the human hand and the eyes are really a great prayer to the, the Almighty's creativity. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep saluting this all the time. And the past, the present, and the future. Mm -hmm. we, we lack the integration of craft. Unless, like, I was talking about integration of art, everything is. All our forms are somewhere connected and integrated.
same thing if you integrate in art, craft, you can get wonderful profit. But somehow uh, the colonial mm, divide and rule concept never allowed these things to be integrated. They took it from different places and integrated it elsewhere and gave it to you as a product. Like meeting a product like Louis uh, they took craft to the need of traveling, to the need, uh, to the need of possessing, keeping things. They integrated uh, printing, brassware, woodwork. Um, the, I think we need to do that, and we became markets for that. You know what I mean? We have suffered a huge uh, situation where. Colonialism has made us into the biggest market. So I think today we need to look around, we need to turn around, and we need to create that kind of integration. About where you've written about um, this cloth making in Kotwara, an art in which people were people and wore what they wore to be what they were. It's a very nice one. Now, I think we'll, uh, Kotwara is your muse, Kotwara is your art. So let's close with uh, one, some few lines from you on that landscape which you carry in your soul all along. It can be Ruby, it can be Ferris, it can be Rahisa, it can be uh, something you wrote. Anything. I will see my house and see what I see. रूज फन मेरी दहली स्वरता है मुझे एक दिन में कुटवारा भी ऑल नर्स मिले यू नो दें सम टेंडर स्पेस विच इज मोर देन दैट टेंडर स्पेस इट्स कैरीज यू टू द आउटर वर्ल्ड टू योर पास्ट टू योर इनर वर्ल्ड एंड दैट इज नॉट जस्ट व्हाट इट्स मीन व्हाट मीन्स या इट्स लॉट ऑफ स्टोरीज यू हर्ड इन दैट स्पेस a lot of uh, food you eat in there, a lot of laughter you enjoy, and now you hold their lives in your custody. Mm -hmm. Because you're more evolved, you're more connected, so they look to you for help. I think there's also a certain anxiety in you whether you will be able to do all that you are expected to do, your father's dreams and all that. So some it's it's easier to make a film. There is an anxiety whether you live up to your father. One can sense that in the beginning parts. Of it. Is there anything that you would want to share which I have not been able to frame as a question? There must be. I think when you call her Babu, then you have to expect that. <laughs> One needs this freewheeling art, freewheeling art, something that you would want to say, which is not very decorative. I think since you are here, and since all these people are here, I think I'd like to share the concern for the city. We are all citizens of a very, very vulnerable culture. We are all very tender at heart, you know what I mean? And uh, all the people here, they, they are suffering from an onslaught of not of uh, insensitivity. So, is there anything that we can do collectively, you and us, to make uh, uh, lives more, you know, worth living, worth sharing, and also worth, uh, I mean, literally worth sharing? Because I think today. We are not looking at, uh, I think this event could be beautiful if half the people were from outside of uh, country also, you know. So what is it that we can't, what we don't have to share? We have got everything to share. So if we can jointly help in taking things to the people, so it can, it can be empowered. You know? While reading the book, I too got that anxiety that there is something very fragile and which one has to preserve at all costs. 
and I get the pain that you and others like you feel that you know when development in courts happens without stakeholders being a part of it, and then things are uh, kind of pushed on to us. Okay. So one can only from the uh, again like I spoke in the case of the library, I can only assure you of my good intentions, and that we will be making you and your ilk a part of what you represent, we will be making you a part of whatever we do. Um, in, in parting, I'll just close with your own line. Uh, there is the center part of the book where we say, it's my humble prayer that this book will be read by everyone passionate about art, craft, design, cinema, and above all, the love and concern for the human race. Amen. From all of us.